Welcome to another edition of the Cornhole Insider Video Podcast. I'm Joel Karnick. This is ACL Pro Blake Karnick. How are you doing, Blake? Thanks for having me again. We'll talk about practicing today. We're brought to you by wreck it boards thanks to kyle ralph and the folks for providing these really cool boards for our podcast thank you to ruthless bags for sponsoring me sponsorship for the pro here coming soon big announcement on that and also thank you to wheelwayautos.com and state farm and knob creek design also northern wisconsin board company you'll be seeing some of their boards in our podcast real soon okay so the first thing we're going to talk about three major points here there's a lot of things we could go into but three we felt were pretty important Number one is pacing, and I haven't seen or heard a lot of people talk about this. Like, we think it's very important that when people are practicing and they're practicing seriously, not with the kids, grandkids, having family fun, but practicing serious to get better for tournaments, that they find a pace and duplicate that from practice to a tournament. Yep, finding that rhythm, the find that consistency, those are the two most important aspects in succeeding in this game, I feel. Whether that's a little bit of a faster pace or trying to slow yourself down the rhythm, as you would play in a tournament, is so important to keep in practice. Yeah, and if we mention pacing and you don't know what your pacing is, it's probably time to find one because it's very important if you want to play at a high elite level that you find that. You might be that person that just fires right away. Some of the pros do that. The opponent's bag hardly stops moving on the board and you're firing, or you need four, five, seven, ten seconds, whatever it may be, take it from practice to the tournament. Yep. Okay, but we're going to show you how we pace ourselves, and we both of us have a little different way of doing it. Now, Blake likes to keep his bags on the board. Yep, and slow the, myself down a little bit. That's why I do it. Yeah, and that's the main reason you did it, is just to pace and to guarantee you're going to have that pace. I like to hang on to the bags just for the reason that I don't want to bend over a thousand times in a weekend major or open, and it seems to work for me. I've learned to slow down a lot. So we'll show you how we throw pacing wise. And again, it's a personal preference, but we'll throw at our typical tournament pace here with the wind blowing a little bit out here. Hopefully we can keep it on the board. So age before beauty. All right, that, well, that's me. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So I like to just take a deep breath, make sure I got my grip on my bag, make sure I'm focused on the hole and get my pacing and just get a nice, Lofty bag. I'll take that. Sure, blocking me right out of the gates. You betcha. That same pace. See if I can stay down the middle here. What a laugh. Yeah. Now he's going to grab two on me, hopefully. That's the plan. <laughs> All right, I'm focused on my target. Make sure I got my grip. My four or five seconds usually for me. Oh, a little left. Ooh, I got a break. I got yeah. a break on that. Let's see if I can get an even wash. Grip, mental focus, four or five seconds yep. for me. Keeping that same pace. Stay up. Oh, got a little Ooh. bit skiddy on me there. I got to come back here and get two points this round. Oh, I jumped on you. Jumped on the hole. I'm going to slip in there and make you. Oh, I'm going for that. All right. He's going to drag that one back. Let's see if he can do it. The SPN shot for the win. Ah, well, sure. All right. Take so a, it's wash. a wash. So again, Pacing, very important. When you're practicing, find whatever it is. Do whatever you have to do to keep that interval between throws the same so you can really find that pace. Yep. All right, let's dig into number two. All right, so the second of the three points we're going to make today is talking about practicing for singles and doubles um, and different ways that you can practice to prepare yourself for both of those because I think a lot of people don't practice a single style format or a double style format and that maybe leaves them a little bit uh, out of practice for a tournament. Yeah, finding that time to practice by yourself and finding that pace as well as maybe practicing with a friend or something in your front yard or even going to your local blind draw, switch holio, whatever, doing a little bit of both and finding your pace of play for both of them is very important. Yeah, and you practice a very unique way for uh, kind of helps you out with singles is you kind of play against yourself sometimes, right? Yeah, I have specific ways I practice to help myself that we'll be talking about more in future videos as well, but finding those ways to find your pace of play and make you focus is very important to me. All right, and keep in mind too, when we talk about that pacing leading into practicing is you know, when you're when you're throwing a bag throw your bag maybe a lot for four or five seconds for your opponent to throw and then you throw because that time lapse between you throwing and your opponent throwing is sometimes i think it's missed too in practice 
There can be 10, 15, 20 seconds intervals sometimes between Yeah, phones. creating those game-like scenarios in your head. If you're playing like a ghost Tolio game or something, like just slowing down and pretending, hey, I'm playing against someone here. I got to slow down like I'm actually playing somebody. It's very important to translate your practice game into an actual tournament. Yeah, and if you have a Switch Holio in your area or if you run one, maybe pick one night out of the week or once every couple weeks to do singles. Singles can translate into a Switch Holio or kind of a blind draw. We do that with our group, and I think it's valuable to our group when we do those singles events. Helps us a lot. Yep. Yeah, it does a lot because you just don't get singles very much. It's it's all Switch Holio and blind draw stuff. So uh, be sure to practice for singles and doubles. And Blake, uh, to practice, I think for doubles, sometimes practicing with one board can be a good thing, especially if it's windy outside, throw with the wind. But simulate that throw, that one-sided throw that you would have maybe the entire day of a doubles tournament. Helps slow you down a little bit. Yep, I agree. Yeah, so uh, take that in consideration when you're practicing. And the third one we're going to jump right into is uh, we're talking about creating scenarios that you would see in a game by dropping bags on the board and creating scenarios that you would typically see in a game. So when you practice, you're not just chucking it in the hole. Of course, four baggers will win a lot. They'll win every time, but it's not realistic. There's going to be bags in front of the hole, so you got to create those scenarios. Yeah, and creating different scenarios too. I mean, right now we have kind of a V block up there. I mean, every couple of rounds, shift that a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, because you're never going to see the same round and back-to-back -back unless you're putting double four-baggers in every round. In that case, you probably don't need to watch this video. But. <laughs> but create those scenarios. What are you uncomfortable with? What shots? Everybody has one or two shots where you know that I struggle with that with. Well, practice your weaknesses. I always say that as a coach, practice your weaknesses so when you get in the game, you at least have a plan to attack whatever scenario it may be. Yep. All right, so we've set up a bag down on the board here, a typical blocker scenario. And Blake and I will do this a lot when we practice, where we'll just drop a bag in front of the board, we'll go down, and we'll throw all four of our bags dealing with that first bag uh, blocker. Uh, so, so let's uh, let's dig in. Nice it creates block. different types of scenarios instead of just trying to slide in every time. It's usually a slide in or off the back or on the back side. Whereas if you're putting something in front of the hole, it makes you really think. All right. All right, so nice blocker, by the way. Yeah, I'm gonna thank try, you. I'm going to try to deal with this blocker that he put out in front of the hole. A little V-block. So this is the most basic of scenarios. You can create a lot of different ones. Yep. All right, so I got a little left. I would step out, but my I can't move this house. So <laughs> um, I'm still going to go a little left to right here and see if I can at least get in behind him a little bit here on this. That's my goal. I like to throw my follow-up bag a little higher because I'm not totally flat. I'll That's take a good that shot. right in behind you. Now you're going to make me airmail. Let's yep. see if I remember some stuff from our last video on airmailing. Yeah. Extending out. And this is a typical scenario you see in a game, Blake, where a lot of people still we see in, in tournaments, people will see this and they'll be baffled as to what to do. If you're a good airmailer, you got to shoot it. If, you got to be decisive. Yeah, you got to be decisive. If I, had and a, have a if I had a good carpet bag, I could consider rolling it too. But for my game, I am going to shoot this. All right. Back of the hole, good. extend out. Good luck. Just a little right. I knocked yeah. mine in though. I guess it, yours in. That's going to be a hard push for you. So let's see, see if, if you can deal with the block again. I'm going to try to see if I can snuggle my bag you a little pushing closer. pushing it too. Yeah, I'm going to push right into it. Yep. I'm going to skid to the right. So now I got a little bit of an alley on the right. I'm going to try throwing a little cut slash roll shot here since I have that bumper on the right. I'll see if I can bag. make it with my Viper. Oh, I almost had it. Just hovered over a little All bit. Right, Fast boards. I, I got the same shot again. So I'm going to come in high because I am. That's my weakness right here. This is my weakness. I'm going to come in a little high. Try to get right behind it. Nice shot. Knock mine in. They leave me in a bad over. scenario. I'm down, I believe, five to four. I'm down five to four in this round. So I could go through this. I could cover it. I could air mail it. I got a lot of options here. I think I'm... <laughs> I think I'm going to cover it and make you make a tough shot. I'm going to try doing that. I struggle with covering up eggs, so see if I can do that. Okay. And it's not great. I left him a good lane for his lefty shot. I'm going to shoot it, though. I, yeah. I think you can just push in. All right, I'll push. We'll see what happens here. In for Coming five. Woo, <laughs> popped up a little bit, but he got them both in. And took mine with. Pops took me to school there and got five <laughs> on me. So create scenarios on the board, the get around shot. I think one 
shot, Blake, that really I practice quite a bit is that get around shot with the slippery side. Sometimes you got a half a hole open and you can step out. I don't think, and we're going to do a video uh, in the future here talking about stepping out because I think there's a lot of times I see in tournaments, small town tournaments, where people have an opportunity to step out and they don't. Or maybe they step out too much also and they don't need to. They try overthinking it. If you should throw stickier, or slippery, there's a lot of factors when you're stepping out that can change the momentum of a round. Yep. Air mailing, floor bagging, of course, is gold. But playing that uh, messed up board with all kinds of different bags on there and knowing uh, that you feel confident in what the right shot is and that you practice it is big. Yep. All right. So there you go. Three great tips for you next time you guys go out and hit the practice uh, boards that hopefully will make you a better player. So we know that practice is something that a lot of people would like to do more of. Maybe you don't have time for whatever reason, but anytime you can get to practice by yourself, Blake, is gold, right? Yep, trying to balance out, like we said in the beginning, that time by yourself, focusing, slowing down, and also playing a switch oleo or blind draw, trying to find that doubles rhythm as well. Doing both is very vital to getting better. All right, practice more, but not enough to beat us next time you see us, please. But uh, <laughs> we hope you guys get better at it. Please hit subscribe. We appreciate you uh, viewing our video. Share it to a friend and uh, look for more future videos on how to get better at this crazy game of cornhole. So we'll see you next time.